Now, Warframe is an awesome game. It's a really cool game. And if you've started playing Warframe, hey, guess what? You're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to love it. It's, it's going to be great. But Warframe is also a game that throws like a million billion things at you right from the start. And it can feel somewhat overwhelming for a new player to have any idea like, hey, what am I, what am I supposed to do? There's just so many options here. No one's like telling me anything about like how anything works. Uh, well, yeah, and that's true. Warframe could have a, a more streamlined new player experience. So hey, this video is here to teach you like just the basics basically of like just what you need to know as a new player to sort of like figure stuff out and uh, figure out how you're supposed to to work okay, this. Are you enjoying so, the view? let's start. Number one is basically just, you know, how to actually advance in the game and what you're supposed to be doing. Because if you go to your codex over here, you, ha you have all of these uh, quests, you can see which ones you've done, uh, which ones you, you haven't yet done, and what sort of uh, prerequisites there are uh, for doing them. Um, so this is one way of like just unlocking story content right away. For example here, uh, I can see that this one, I've already done Vox Solaris, so this one is going to unlock once I reach Mastery Rank 4. Here, I have to go to a relay and talk to Darvo. That's how I unlock this mission. And stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff. Uh, and, and a lot of times you'll see that it just says Junction. And what that means is uh, the connecting points between planets. They're called Junctions. So, as you can see here, this is the junction to take me to the next planet, to, to Ceres, from Mars. And uh, by actually, like, completing these junctions and, and reaching them and doing whatever you need to do to be able to access them, you can unlock more quests, like you see here. By doing this junction, you get the quest called the, Ar or the Archwing. Archwing? Archwing? Hmm, I don't know. Um, and, and that's gonna, like, be the case for... Uh, uh, for for like other planets as well. Moving on. Once you do the the Ceres junction, you might unlock uh, more quests or the Jupiter junction, as it were, uh, and so on and so forth. So, what you should do as a new player, uh, whenever you get to a new planet, you should always hover over the junctions of the planet and read what you're supposed to do. To, to be able to access it and to be able to uh, to reach the next junction. And it's going to give you a bunch of rewards for doing so, uh, stuff you're going to need moving forward. And you can also unlock more main quests. So obviously, yes, playing every node on a planet is nice and unlocking the entire planet. There's reasons for doing that. Um, but mostly you can also just as well just like beeline for the junctions and then just read hey what do i need to do okay i gotta do the boss on this planet and i gotta do 10 waves on a defense mission etc etc and once you have done all of that you can access it if you haven't done everything like for here for example i have not yet been to phobos i haven't defeated the sergeant so if i try to access the junction now without having completed the the uh, prerequisites i'm not gonna be able to do it uh, the game won't let me. So if I just go here and I try to sort of like start this, I can't. Yeah, I just can't interact with this panel because I haven't done all the things that I need to do uh, in order to be able to do it. And as you continue to progress in the main quest, you're also going to have this tab up here, which is just like your quests tab. And you can choose which, which uh, quest that you want to do. Like, I don't have to do the archwing. I can click on it and start that quest if I want to. Uh, but I can also just click on one of these other ones. Hey, for example, I've already done this. I already matured a Kubro, so I think by clicking this quest, I'm going to complete it. Channel, your Kubro has matured. Now, there is only one more right oh, of right. passage before you can truly be bonded. Right, so there was one more step I hadn't done yet. Ha ha ha. So that quest actually isn't completed yet. But hey, if I don't want to do that right now, I don't have to. I can just go and just set another quest as my active quest instead. And, and that's just fine. It's, it's going to be fine. Next up, this might seem like a minor thing, but it's actually quite important. As a new player, you will get 50 platinum as a starting resource. And platinum is like the currency that you have to spend real money uh, to get. 
This is a free-to-play uh, game, uh, but you can choose to spend money and get platinum, which you can use to sort of purchase stuff with. And your 50 starting platinum, which by the way is not tradable, you can't create an account just to trade away your 50 starting plat, ha ha ha, no. Uh, but your 50 starting platinum, um, you know, you should spend it on something, right? So the question is what? Do not spend it on like frivolous things like decorations or whatnot, or just, I don't know, equipment, hey, boosters and mods and stuff like that. D don't. Don't pick something something like this. There's one thing that you like. It, it should on, this should practically be your only option. It should be the only thing you look at uh, when it comes to what you spend your starting platinum on, and that is slots. Uh, what slots is is inventory space. That's it. That's what it is. If you go to your equipment and you go to your inventory it'll show you your inventory space. So for example, as a new account here, I have an Excalibur, That's I picked that as the starting Warframe, and I have one more open slot, which means I can create another Warframe. I can co collect all the component pieces and craft it. Uh, but that's it, I, I can only make like one more because I only have one more open slot. And after that, my inventory is full. I don't have enough inventory space. Same with my weapons, I can craft more weapons, but as it is right now, I can only craft like two more weapons. After that, I can't claim anymore. I have one that's in my inventory right now. I mean, in my foundry, see here? I built it, the Boltor. So when I claim it, need a mosquito. But I go to uh, my inventory now, and hey, look. Now I only have one open slot left. So if I craft another weapon, then I can't make any more weapons until uh, unless I like sell off other ones that I've already leveled up. So, you are always strapped for inventory space in this game. You always need more slots. And pretty much everything that exists in this game, you can just farm for. You can just, if you want a new Warframe, hey, you can farm for it. If you want a new weapon, you can farm for it. Um, there are events that go on, like, now and again, where you can get, like, armor and decorations and color palettes and stuff. That's going to show up just from time to time when you play the game. But slots are very hard to come by, very hard. Uh, and you pr almost, with one exception, you almost always have to spend platinum to get them. So what you're gonna do, if you're smart as a new player, you're gonna go and get weapon slots. It's two slots in one of these. I'm gonna purchase that. I'm gonna purchase another one, even more weapon slots. And then we're gonna look for Warframe slots. Because that's called slot, because it's only one. I'm gonna buy one of those. And now you have like six starting platinum left and that's fine. You're eventually gonna be able to like make more platinum. You can buy more platinum and, you, and there are ways of making platinum, but we'll get to that in a uh, later video. But for now, you, you need that. Trust me when I tell you as a new player if there's one thing you need more than anything else, it's inventory space. Pick slots, you're gonna thank me. Alright, let's talk about mission rewards, because this is uh, kind of important in understanding how you actually get access to a lot of the tools uh, that you need to be able to sort of like, you know, push through and, and be able to do like higher level stuff. Um, different sort of missions can reward you in different ways. There are... Uh, Single objective missions, like exterminate missions, you just have to kill a certain number of enemies and then the mission ends and you extract. Uh, capture, just capture uh, a, a a significant target or whatever that's marked on the map, and then you extract. And these missions tend to not really reward you with a whole lot. Then there are so-called endless missions, for example, like a defense mission or... Uh, an excavation mission and how these missions differ is that you choose how long you want to play it for and at certain times you will sort of be presented with the opportunity to extract if you play uh, a defense mission every five waves it'll ask you if you want to extract uh, if you play a survival mission every five minutes or after five minutes uh, you can extract, but you can also stay if you want to. You can stay for as long as, as, as you like. 
and every five minutes you will get a new reward for it. Excavation missions are the best ones for a new player to uh, to farm for items because you, you, f every time you finish an excavation you get another reward. Now what sort of reward you get, it, it, it follows a rotation in most missions. It is called AABC. You like learn this, just, just put it to heart. Uh, what that means is that there are three different uh, pools of items and gear and whatnot that you can draw your rewards from. So first you will get a reward from the A pool, which is like, you know, the lower sort of like value rewards. And then you'll get another reward from the A pool. After that, you'll get a reward from the B pool. And after that, you'll get a reward from the C pool. And then it's going to rotate back. So it's going to be AABC, AABC, AABC. Which is uh, why, for example, if you play an excavation mission, you should always try to at least complete uh, four successful ex exca uh, excavations to make sure that you get uh, one reward from uh, from each drop table, as it were. If you play a defense mission, well, that's 20 waves, because the first five waves you're going to get a uh, table one reward, or table A reward. Another five waves, a table A reward. Another five waves, table B, and another five waves, table C. Same with survival. If you want to get to the D reward, uh, you actually have to stay for 20 minutes in the mission. So that, that, that takes a lot longer. Excavation is much easier on you, because like finishing four excavators, you can do that in pretty short time. And you can actually get some pretty good stuff this way. One thing to keep in mind is that, you know, don't stretch yourself too far. And don't try to push too hard, because the longer you stay, uh, the harder it's going to get. Enemies are going to level up over time. And if you fail the mission, for example, say you play a defense mission and you make it to, like, wave 15, but you decide to stay and go for, for wave 20. Say you, like, sort of uh, fail and the defense uh, objective dies or gets destroyed when you're on, like, a wave 19 or something. Well, that means you, you don't get anything. You, you, you lose out on all the rewards. So, you know, pay attention to that and be a bit smart about it. But this is how you get access to, like, a lot of the, the kind of important stuff. Uh, like the sort of rare uh, mods and, you know, sort of high-level stuff that, that, that you're actually going to need uh, to, to be able to progress uh, further on in the game. Oh yeah, and also, hey, uh, spy missions. Every spy mission has three vaults. That's easier. If you only manage to open one vault, you'll get a reward from the A table. If you manage to open all three vaults, you will get a reward from the A table, the B table, and the C table. And running these early uh, spy missions actually gives you some, some very, very important mods. We're gonna get to that very soon. So let's talk about your mastery rank. What's that, you ask? Well, your mastery rank is this number up here, right next to your profile. See here, I am mastery rank three. And right underneath this profile here, you can see like a progress bar. That's what this is, showing you how uh, far or how close you are uh, to reaching your next mastery rank. Now, once your uh, mastery rank bar has filled up completely, uh, you will be presented with um, an initiation ritual of sorts. Uh, there will be a, a challenge for you, a test that you have to, uh, uh, to master uh, in order to actually get Proving your rank up and rank up to a new mastery level. Targets. This is something that you can do um, once per day if you fail. So, you know, if, if you are not successful in completing the task, then you have to wait uh, 24 hours before you can again, again. attempt to, uh, to rank up in mastery. But the, the first couple of ones shouldn't be too hard. They, ca they get a bit more uh, difficult uh, later on. But it, it should be fine, at least until you reach, like, I don't know, Mastery Rank 8, 9, and 10 or something, until it might become a struggle. And uh, you'll see when you level up what you get for doing it at your new Mastery Rank. Sometimes it'll say, like, hey, you've unlocked Syndicates now. That's a new thing you can have access to that you couldn't before. Stuff like that. Now, this is your overall level. And by 
raising your mastery rank up to a new level, you get access to more and better and more powerful stuff and different weapons. If I were to go to the market now and I look at like different weapons that are available to me, there, it's a quite short list. And then when you get further down the list, it says mastery locked. I can't get these weapons because I need to be a higher mastery rank. And on the weapon, if you hover over it, see here one, this one says mastery seven, the baza. So I need to be mastery rank seven to be able to use this weapon. And some are like the best weapons in the game. You need to get up there in mastery rank. The Exceltra, it's one of the best, like it's a machine gun rocket launcher. Oh, oh my God, it's, it's fantastic. You need to be mastery rank eight in order to use it. The Cedo, uh, like probably the best shotgun in the game. Also, you need to be mastery rank eight. Uh, Fulmin, mastery rank eight. Another super, super popular uh, weapon. And etc, etc. Some of these can get up pretty high, like 12. 10 stuff like that so uh you need to raise your mastery rank and then you're like oh okay so i'll just keep on playing and i'll keep on leveling up forever uh, but no that's actually not true because the way this game works is that you can only level things up to rank 30 once you're at rank 30 for example this excalibur that i have here then it's at max rank and i i can't level it up any further than that which means that if I play missions now, like I'm gonna, I'm, 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 I'm gonna stop getting EXP. I'm not gonna get any more EXP for playing with this Excalibur. If I wanted to keep on getting more EXP from my Warframe, I'd have to build a new Warframe and start playing with that from rank zero and leveling that up up to rank thirty. Same with this gun. I'm not getting EXP for this gun anymore. I am still getting EXP from this gun and from this weapon because I'm still leveling them up. But once they're rank 30, I'm not getting EXP for them. So if you run around with an entire set of stuff that's all uh, mastered, if you have like a rank 30 Warframe, a rank 30 primary weapon, a rank 30 secondary weapon, a rank 30 melee weapon, you are not getting experience. You are not ga gaining any EXP and you are not raising your mastery rank. So what that means is in this game, you are supposed to always level up new stuff. Once something is maxed out like this, you're supposed to stop using it. You're supposed to switch to a new weapon and start using this instead and start leveling that up. And that is how you raise your mastery rank. That is how you get access to end game stuff. And it unlocks more stuff like that. It unlocks trading. It unlocks syndicates. It unlocks just, you know, hey, bunch of stuff. It unlocks kuvaliches. It unlocks uh, quests, stuff. So you should always focus on raising your master rank. And the re way to do that is by always getting new gear, getting new weapons and leveling them up. You can go to your profile and on your profile, there's a tab called Equipment. Now, it'll show you uh, on this list uh, what you own. It's going to be highlighted and what you don't own is going to be grayed out. And among the things that you do own, it's also going to show you this little uh, icon here to show you that you have mastered it. Um, so that's good to know. That's good to know. So you don't like, you know, pick some hey what do i know maybe you accidentally craft a new lotto or something and that's not gonna work you can't just take the same weapon and level it up again from 0 to 30 it only counts once i have mastered the lotto i can no longer gain more exp by using the lotto it's just I, I can't so that's how you do it that's how you level up your uh, mastery rank and you should always be trying to level up your mastery rank there are like so many bonuses that come with it. For one, for example, I am now mastery rank three. What that means is when I get a new weapon and I want to put some mods into it, it has a mod capacity of three from the start. So I can like take, um, well, most of the stuff I have costs more than three, but hey, I can take this, uh, this flawed serration here and I can I can slot it in see I can increase the damage a little bit right from the start So if you like go all the way up to mastery rank 30 Yeah, you can just equip a new unranked weapon and it's gonna be like it's gonna have maxed out mod capacity from the start So that's very good your mastery rank also determines 
uh, how much like faction standing you can get per day from the, the various factions in the game. The syndicates, the open world stuff, stuff like that. So higher master rank means that like, hey, leveling up syndicates, leveling up uh, in the open world, it's gonna go faster. Your master rank also determines uh, your uh, void traces, how many of them you can have. I can now have like a total of 250 because I am master rank three. So always, always level up mastery. It's good for you, trust me. Uh, put your focus on it. All right, now we're coming to a big one and that is uh, the mod system mods how they work uh, this is very important to understand leveling up weapons with just exp and getting them from rank 0 to rank 30 does not make them better it doesn't change their stats an unranked bolt door and a rank 30 bolt door have the exact same base stats the only thing leveling up a weapon does is increases the mod capacity and the mods or what actually make the weapon better. And this is like how you unlock the late game. This is how you unlock actually being able to, to, to tear through enemies at higher levels. So, how are you supposed to mod your weapons then, you ask? Look, I'm going to show you something right off the bat, like for starters. This right here, see here, this is what you shouldn't do. I'm using my entire mod capacity here. I'm using all 30 of, of my available mod slots and I've filled up every mod slot, but I have not leveled up any of these mods. These are all the, the base mods, so I get like 20% more damage from this Hornet Strike. 15% more heat damage, 15% electricity damage, 10% puncture damage, and these upgrades are extremely insignificant. They barely, like, change the, the output uh, of damage at all. No, this is what you want it to look like. See here? I'm on this one, I'm only using three mods, but I have leveled them up. I have leveled them up so that they are way, way more potent, and this is just so much stronger. Let's look at the base stats of these weapons, if we, like, remove all the mods from them, okay? Let's just... Yeah, yeah. Bam. Now, the Bratton, uh, you know, it's a, it's a machine gun, so every shot does 24 damage. The Lato, every shot does 30 damage, so it's actually like a, a more hard-hitting weapon. But if you remember what, I, what you just saw before, even with all of those mods in, I only took it from 30 damage to 47 damage, which is like a... 55% increase in damage, something like that. The Bratton, on the other hand, goes from 24 to 123. So it's like five times more damage. Four times? Five times? Four times? Yeah, let's say, let's say that. That sounds fun. I cannot stress enough that like a, a couple of high rank mods are so much more potent than just filling up a weapon with uh, with low rank ones. So you gotta level up your mods. How do you do that? You spend endo. You can do that from this screen with your equipped mods, or you can do it uh, from over here where all of your mods are. But say we only do it here from this screen, okay? So we go to this here Lotto and, and we rethink how this thing is modded. Say we only want to use Hornet Strike. We only want to use Convulsion. We only want to use Heated Charge. Okay, so this is just damage, damage, damage and nothing else. We're not gonna use any other sort of weird like status effect or crit chance right now. That's better for in the late game, but for an early game player you just want damage. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna start leveling them up. You go to your mods. These are your three equipped mods. You choose the one you want to level up. And you start infusing it here. And this is where you have to spend your endo and credits. And then you choose how much you want to level it up. And as you can see, like it starts getting very costly, both in terms of credits and endo, when you get up to really high levels. So we might not put it all the way up there. Let's just put it at, hey, plus 100% damage. 
That sounds way better than what we had. Yeah, sure, we can uninstall. Whatever. This one, the heated charge. 15% heat. Nah, nah, nah. We're gonna infuse that. We're gonna get that one up to... 75% heat. I like it. I'm gonna do the same thing with this here convulsion mod. Boom. 75. Now... Instead of having 47 damage per shot, like we had before, we now have 150 damage per shot. And we even have a bit of spare mod capacity over, so let's just put in, I don't know, a little bit more puncture damage. Yeah, sure. See that? That's what unranked mods do. 150, 151. That's what I'm talking about. So don't do that. Go for... A couple of really high rank mods that are gonna do so much more for you than just filling up with with low rank ones so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the same thing here uh, where it's like just level level up your mods people <laughs> that's that's it just level up your mods um, for your Warframe I recommend uh, these three above all else more shields more health, more armor. You have stuff that you're going to get in the later game that like in makes your abilities better. But uh, for now, just focus on survivability. Let your weapons do uh, most of the heavy lifting. Now there's one final thing I have to talk about when it comes to mods to make sure that you do not uh, make mistakes and waste resources. If you look at your mods here, you're gonna see that you have these mods uh, that look they, they look cracked. See, there's a, there's, a, there's a crack in the screen, it looks broken. Let's take one that we have to both versions of. Let's go to like Vitality. See here, I have Vitality and then I have the cracked one, the flawed Vitality. These ones are like, you get them from playing the tutorial. You just get all of these flawed uh, mods as part of the missions. These are worse versions of the mods. They cannot be upgraded uh, as far. As you can see here, this one only gives 30 health as it, at, it, at its base. Whereas the normal one gives plus 40% health. And the normal one, you can just see the numbers. You can see how many times you can upgrade those. Whereas the fraud one, you can only upgrade it three times. So do not invest in these flawed mods. Do not spend resources on them because you're not going to use them. In fact, when you like get the real ones, you can pretty much sell off the, the flawed ones. Some of these are extremely important. For example, uh, maybe the most important mod in the game for a new player... Serration, which is just the mod that increases your rifle damage. You will get a flawed Serration mod uh, when you just go through the tutorial, but you really, really want the real serration mod and that is the one that you want to upgrade that's when you want to spend your resources on so how do you get a serration mod as a new player hey here's the easiest way spy missions pick the spy mission like the lowest level ones either on earth or on venus and successfully open all three vaults that third one the 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 c tier reward can give you a serration mod it can also give you two other very important mods. These two, Vicious Frost and Volcanic Edge. Very strong melee mods. Increase heat damage and cold damage and also increase your status chance. They're great. They make your melee weapon so much better. You can get those as well. Those are also part of the drop table and it's a potential reward for opening all three vaults in low-level spy missions. Do that, get Serration, and then you can start playing the game for real. Okay, so you already know now from how the mastery system works that you're supposed to get a bunch of new weapons and you're supposed to level them up and you're supposed to get new Warframes. And then the question is like, hey, how do I do that? We've already seen some of this from the junctions. Like how when you, when you uh, unlock a junction, see here, you get like a weapon blueprint as a, as a reward for completing it. And that's one way of getting new weapons, and that's one way that new players mostly do get new weapons. So, you will see most new players run around with the same stuff. They're gonna have the Furious. They're gonna have the, the Dragoon. They're gonna have the Fragor. Fragor? Fragor? Whatever. 
because these are what you get from from uh, accessing the junctions but what if you want like more stuff than that because hey you saw all of this list with a bunch of different weapons uh, here in the market now this is where the game's user interface is a bit uh, uh, sneaky and not very beginner friendly unfortunately because if you see here if you hover over these in the store it just shows you the platinum price for buying the weapon for most of them there are some exceptions like some very early sort of basic weapons like here this shotgun where you can just you can just buy the shotgun off the market like this you can just buy it yeah you can do that and now i have it but but these this is very very early game stuff where you can do that but other than these it's like hey i can just I, why can i only see like platinum cost for it but you can't actually get them anyway the thing is you actually have to click on uh the weapon itself and here, when you're in this menu, you see that, oh yeah, I can purchase the weapon with platinum, but I can also purchase the blueprint for the weapon with credits. Oh, okay. And once you do that, purchase the blueprint uh, with credits, then you also need more credits and a bunch of resources to craft it in your foundry. But that's something you can do. Like, that's something you can do. See here? The Burston. I'll just do it. I'll just buy the blueprint. Bam. Okay, I got, I got that now. I got that now. Now I can go to my foundry. And I can build the Burston. Obviously I can't do it right now because I've been demonstrating, like, leveling up mods and stuff. And that took all of my credits. This cost 25,000 credits and currently I only have 10,000. But hey, I'll do a Dark Sector mission tomorrow and then I can build the Burston. And then I have a new weapon to level up to increase my Master Rank. Now, there are other weapons that you get other ways. There are weapons you can get as mission rewards. There are weapons you can get as drops from enemies. There are weapons that you get from dojo research, stuff like that. But a lot of weapons, you can just buy the blueprint here from the market and craft it. And that's how you get it. Some of the best weapons in the game are you can just get here from the market. So, you know, do that. Buy new stuff every day level it up now not always sell it not always sell it when you've leveled it up because there are some weapons that when you craft them uh, you need uh, to have something else you need to have some previous weapon look here for example the 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 boltus in order to build it i have to have previous weapons i have to have a bolt or and a cronan so like you have to sort of keep track of that and check if the weapon that you have is also a component piece for a later weapon. In which case, hey, don't sell it when you've mastered it. Instead, use it as uh, a crafting piece for making a new weapon. Very important. So that's weapons. When it comes to Warframes, they work a bit differently. When it comes to Warframes, usually, uh, for a lot of the early game Warframes, you fight bosses for them. For example here. Fossa on Venus. Yeah. That is how you farm for Rhino. The Rhino Warframe. But, but you still have to get the blueprint for the Warframe itself. And it works the exact same way here. You're only going to see the Platinum price when you hover over it. But if you actually go and click on it. You can see that you can buy the blueprint for the Rhino. 35,000 credits and then you need 25,000 credits more to craft it and then you also need the new optics the chassis and the systems and the way to do that is by fighting a boss so in the case of rhino it's this boss here the jackal so if you just jump in and do this mission and fight the jackal beat him and extract you are going to get one of the rhino parts uh, which one? Hard to tell. It's a random drop, so there are three different ones. So, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just, hey, play this mission three times and you're gonna get the three Rhino parts. Nope. Um, you might have to play this mission... I don't know. Ten times, fifteen times, if you're unlucky uh, with the drops.
your message to the corpus today. And here we go. Let's see which one it is. Target down. Assassination contract. We got the Rhino Neuroptics. So that's one of the three pieces we need. Ain't that neat. Simple as that. Simple as that on. And this is not going to be the case for all Warframes. Some Warframes, you get the blueprint and the parts as like quest rewards. So if you just keep on playing the main quest, uh, you're going to get those. Warframes like, like Limbo. There are other Warframes that you can get from certain vendors. There are other Warframes that you can get from, you know, certain mission types. Uh, but a whole lot of them are acquired, and, you know, just like this. And then it's just a matter of like just farming all of the parts. Like for example here. Hey, look at that. I have the Rhino systems. Now, unfortunately, I have two of the Rhino Neuroptics. Uh, I do not yet have the Rhino chassis. So that means I just have to play this, this mission over and over again until I get to the third part. And then I go to the market, buy the blueprint for the Warframe itself. And, you know, hey, that's how you get a Rhino. And, hey, seeing as how we spent our starting Platinum, as we talked about before, on Warframe slots, and we can currently make two new Warframes. So we can level up two new Warframes if we want to. Ain't that cool. So, as a new player, one thing you're pretty much always strapped for in the early game is credits. You're always gonna want more credits. You're never gonna have enough credits. And, like, yes, you can go to the market and buy credits with Platinum, but don't ever do that. Uh, I know that it can be tempting to sell off duplicate mods and stuff for credits. You should not do that. Uh, because, you know, hey, guess what? You're gonna need those credits for, for Endo. I mean, those mods. Because Endo is hard to come by, uh, especially for a new player. You need your Endo to upgrade your mods. And dissolving mods uh, for Endo is actually perfectly viable. You can get credits that way, but man, you're gonna kick yourself later when you don't have any endo, and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish I had just gotten endo instead. No, there is other ways of getting credits for new players. Certain missions are better to play than others. Once you get to the later stages of the star chart, all the way over here to Neptune, uh, there is one node called the Index that you can run to, uh, to earn tons and tons of cash. But let's assume we're not there yet. Let's assume we're on one of, like, the starting planets. Earth, Venus, Mercury, Mars. You know, around there in the star chart. Now, there are certain mission nodes that have a little icon that looks like this. This little icon right here. You can see Malva on uh, Venus and Romulan on Venus. These are so-called dark sectors. Which is uh, sectors that have been, like, taken over by, by the infestation. As it were, here, Koba on Earth, that's also a Dark Sector mission. So these are always against the Infested. And Dark Sector missions, they always award uh, more credits than normal missions do. So, uh, from, from, for start, just like play those. They also give like more, you know, more affinity, more resource drop chance in general. Uh, so they're pretty good farming missions for, for a new player. And additionally... And this is very important to know. There is a system in this game um, that the, the first mission you play every day when you log in will award you, like, double credits. So, um, it's very important that when you log in as a new player, the first mission that you play is a Dark Sector mission. Because it already gives you way more credits than all the other missions do, and... It's gonna double that. So, now we're only talking about end of mission rewards. So, say for example, if it's a survival mission, right? You don't have to stay for like half an hour or anything like that. Because like the, the, actual, the actual end of mission credit reward is gonna be the same. No matter if you stay for 5 minutes or if you stay for 25 minutes. It's not gonna be different. So what you wanna do, and I'm gonna be nice here. There might be players here who want to go long. And if I'm not going to go long, then it's kind of rude to just jump in and then extract immediately. So I'm just going to go solo to not annoy anyone else. And we're going to do the survival mission here on Mars. And I'm going to run it for the shortest amount of time. Which means I am going to run this mission for 5 minutes. 
and once those five minutes are over, I'm going to immediately extract. And um, let's just skip the cinematic. Distract the infested while allow Tenno operative hunts for supplies. Set off the alarms to start. Start the mission. A steady stream of toxic spores is being released into the area. Hold and here we on. go. Emergency life support is inbound. So now we're just gonna cut. Uh, and we're gonna jump, jump forward in time by about exactly five minutes. And then I'll show you. And here we go. So yeah. A cool 37,000 credits. I um, picked up a cash, mission credits, whatever. So the credit reward here, 34,000. Which is double what it would have been otherwise. So this is something you can do once per day. To get, just start off the day by just getting a big chunk of credits. Uh, and it's going to help you move forward a, a lot in the early game. Until you reach the index where you can actually start farming credits for real. Okay, I want to talk quickly about Nightwave. Nightwave is something you should know about as a new player. It is this radio <laughs> right here, this radio station. Nightwave was introduced as a, uh, a, a a sort of like Warframe's version of a season pass. They've been doing this for a while now. It's going to give you a certain number of weekly missions. Uh, that can range from very easy to like kill enemies with a certain damage type to completing invasion missions to more esoteric stuff like unlocking Roken vaults that's like more complicated how you do that um, but a lot of these are going to be sort of attainable for a, uh, a new player as well here like finding all the caches in a sabotage mission yeah you can do that just play a sabotage mission and find all the caches kill 500 enemies you can do that uh, this rotates every week with new rewards so keep track of how long you have to complete these until it rotates come back every week uh, to see uh, what uh, what the missions are and try to complete as many as possible because the, re the rewards you get for doing the nightwave stuff is very very important for a new player like look at this you get more weapon slots you get an Orokin catalyst which you can use this is a one time use item that permanently doubles the mod capacity on a weapon that you own so it goes from if it's at max if it's at max rank it goes from uh, being able to have uh, 30 mod capacity to 60 which means you can slot in twice as many high rank mods and do like twice as much damage these are very important to turn your weapons and your warframes into uh, end game worthy stuff see this this is an Orokin reactor it's the same thing as the catalyst except you use it on a warframe instead of on a weapon. Keep on going, you get another Warframe slot. You get Riven mods, you get rare mods, you get credit boosters that last for a couple of days. Um, you get cool cosmetic items. Uh, you get new emotes, forma, stuff like that. It's very important. And you also get these credits that you can use on the uh, Nora's uh, cred store here. Here you can get stuff like aura mods that you can equip into your Warframe to increase the uh, mod capacity of your Warframe and just, you know, hey, give it some more new stuff. I bought this one for more melee damage. It's very good. Uh, you can get cosmetics, new helmets for Warframes, and you can get another Warframe this way. This is how you get Vaban, the engineer Warframe. You buy the actual blueprint for Vaban from the market, but here's how you get his component pieces from uh, these uh, Nightwave credits. So that's another Warframe you can get this way. You can get some weapons this way. And hey, look at this, you can you can actually spend your credits on getting catalysts and reactors. Ain't that cool? So check it, let's let's do that, just for demonstration. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use some of my credits I got for doing a Nightwave. I'm gonna get an Orokin reactor. How about that? Yeah. And then I just go over here to my arsenal go to upgrade my Excalibur and I want to take an action. I want to double my mod capacity and then boom! See that? 
I just went from a mod capacity of 39 to 69. I can now start like upgrading all my mods way, way higher than I could before. And just uh, like all of these, I can max them all out and that's fine. I'm still going to be within capacity. You can get so much more health, so much more shields, so much more armor, so much more ability strength, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, hey, it's going to be a breeze. I'm going to be able to access so much higher level content and still sort of like be, be efficient. So yeah, Nightwave, important. Check your weekly missions, do them. The rewards are fantastic for a new player. Absolutely game-changing. Now, I've talked about just, you know, mission rewards and and the market and how you can get stuff from there, but there is actually one more way that you can get access to more stuff in the game, and that is through clans and dojos. Um, they, have, they have stuff you can research in the clans that you can just later get so as you can see here this is a this is the dojo section and you can go in and like look at other people's dojos and whatnot um and there's stuff in there so if you want to get access to that either you join a clan if you go here to recruiting chat um there is pretty much always people here who are uh recruiting for, for different clans. If I just stay in this window for long enough, someone's gonna be like, hey, hey, join my clan. We have a clan, join our clan. And so so it's it's not gonna be hard for you to join a clan if you uh, want one. That's one way of doing it. Or, or if you don't wanna join a clan, you're one of those people who just, hey, I wanna do everything by myself. I'm not a team player, I'm a me player. What you can do then is you can go to your communication tab, where the clan tab is, and you can start your own clan, right? And you can call it my own clan. There you go. Ah, <laughs> that already exists. My own clan two. There you go. We have a clan called my own clan too i am now the founding warlord of it right but i can't enter my clan dojo yet because i need to have a clan key for that but once you start a clan you're just gonna get that that's just gonna pop in in your foundry here here look at that you just craft your clan key now once you have a clan key you can just uh, access your dojo, which isn't going to have anything in it. And this is another part of the game, where you just have to uh, build your own house, construct your own dojo, build different rooms, different research stations uh, that allow you to access new stuff. Now, when you're in this clan, you can access... Uh, you can get blueprints for new weapons, blueprints for new warframes. You can build a railjack... Which is a huge, huge spaceship that you can use for, like, interstellar space battles and stuff. I'm not even joking. Um, there, there's, like, a million billion different things that you can, like, add to your arsenal from, from the clans. And, hey, if you join, like, a big clan and stuff, you can also always find a squad. You can always find people to sort of help you out with whatever it is that you want to be doing right now. So clans are cool. Um, get one or start your own clan. But get on that, because there's some good stuff in there. And finally, what you've really been asking yourself this entire time... What's up with that weird growth on my neck? What's that all about? <laughs> so, uh, this thing right here on your neck, uh, it's called a Helminth Cyst. You get it by interacting in like a public mission with another player who also has a helmet cyst on their neck and it just spreads throughout the community like a wonderful little STD. And and basically everyone has it. And like if you play for long enough, you're just you're gonna get one on your Warframe. Now, there are two different ways you can get rid of a helmet cyst, and both of them are permanent. So hey, if you like it, if you wanna keep it on your neck, then by all means keep it on your neck. Otherwise, either Either you can go to your incubator, 
which is how you like make your uh, your kubros and, and your kavats and stuff like that. And when you're in the tab for kubro breeding, breeding, uh, if you have an egg uh, and an incubator power core, uh, costs a hundred thousand credits to buy, you will also get the option uh, to uh, remove the cyst and use your weird your weird cancer growth on your neck to create a a disgusted infested monster dog called a Helminth Charger. That's something you can do with it. And then it's gone forever. Or if you want to get rid of it, you know, for free without having to buy a incubator power core, or if you're not interested in um, you know, getting a monster dog. Uh, once this thing has grown to its full uh you know, potential. <laughs> you can see it here now. This is fully grown, this cyst. It grows a bit every day until it's, like, ripe. And once it's ripe, this door will open. This door is otherwise closed, but it opens if you approach it with a Warframe that has a cyst. And then you have... Disgusting, is it not? Aubrey? Indeed, you have this disgusting chair right here. And this thing. What's that thing, huh? We're gonna get to that in a later video. Uh, what what this is actually about in this room and what you can use it for, uh, but for now, you can use it. Operator, no! Have you lost your mind? To get rid of your disgusting neck boil, and pop, it's gone forever. Here we go, back to normal again. That's it. That's it. And now, whoop. We can no longer access this room. This door is now closed again. And the only way to get back in is to approach it with another Warframe that has a cyst on its neck. Until later in the game, where we will be able to access it again whenever we want to. But that's uh, for that's for later. That's when we got some stuff that we don't have already. So for now, it's like, yeah, that's how you do it. It's gone now. Hooray. Now that's basically all for now. Like, I'm gonna make more videos like this because, to trust me, there's more stuff. But uh, for a new player, hey, this is some guidance on on uh, how you're supposed to play the game so that you understand, like, sort of, like, just, you know, what to do and what not to do, I guess. We're gonna be back with more of these videos in the future when uh, I talk about some more intermediate stuff and later on I'm gonna talk about more high-level stuff as well. Uh, but for now, take take these lessons and take them with you and go out go out there and just you know start start grinding for stuff.